always wanted to be an artist. And my mother, being like all mothers, always encouraged me in that dream. Until a third form report from Trinity College that said, that said, I have no real artistic talent. And that reality had me crashing down into what am I really good at? And because of that, I became a storyteller. And regardless of where I've, or what I've done in life, my ability to tell stories and to write has always been fundamental to who I am. As you can tell, I really can't draw at all. But I'm a very good storyteller. I don't think this is good. So this is such an interesting topic. My first conscious memory about branding came about in about 1996 when I was sat at a small computer on a dial-up connection, and that was in the dark ages of the internet. And we had a program called ICQ, and for those of you who know ICQ, I still know my number, it's 5390-4214. Uh, this is a logo, it made a little sound of a baby going, uh-oh, I don't know if you've heard it on my keyboards. Uh, and ICQ predated MSN and Skype and Facebook and all of these things. And what was interesting about ICQ is they had a little button that you'd click and a globe would spin and you'd get a friend from random chat which would pop up and they would be from somewhere like Australia or New York or France. And the awareness of coming from the Caribbean came to my mind when they never really knew where Trinidad was, they never knew where the Caribbean was, they always thought it was some part of Africa or some part of South America. They never really understood that wow, we do have like computers in Trinidad. And I used to tell them that I was actually using my pineapple powered computer to talk to them. <laughs> uh, because that was ludicrous to me, so I developed a ludicrous answer to that question. And I became excited about this topic of branding the Caribbean because that's what I'm about. I'm the creative director of a company that does new media, and we look at new ways to brand things. And I was excited to try to brand the Caribbean. And the first thing that I had to do in order to do that properly was to conduct a survey. And we, I surveyed 62 persons from across the region, uh, ranging in age from 17 to 74. And what we tried to do with the survey was get a sense of positive and negative perceptions of the Caribbean. And the interesting thing is while we were doing this survey, I came across this picture. And it was interesting because it was so true as to what people perceive that we really do. We live on the island that Tom Hanks was on when he was lost. Uh, we eat fruits and vegetables. I definitely ride dolphins on Saturdays. We sleep on the beaches. We dance by campfires. But really, this is who we are in the bottom right hand. And it reminded me of a joke that a friend of mine told me when she went to a very prestigious school in the US. And they asked her, well, how could you afford to come here? You're from the Caribbean. And she told them with a straight face that she came from a long line of banana vendors. And that was how her family got their wealth. And they were puzzled. And she's like, have you ever seen a straight banana? My family has a secret to banana vendors. And they believed this. They believed this for about four years that she was there. And it's these types of misconceptions we struggle against when you do branding, like understanding what people think. And this is some of the things that we constantly struggle with coming from the Caribbean. Is that Jamaica? Regardless of where you come from, you are from Jamaica. Do you have internet, cars, cell phones, and other various sorts of technology? If it's cool and it's technological, it doesn't exist here. And everyone is either corrupt or slow to action or combination of both. Uh, uh, surprisingly, our major export is marijuana and music, if you didn't know, now you do. <laughs> and we're always accosted about our accent. You know, your accent is so cute, and Mildred, come on, hear this man talk. And you know, this is one of my favorite responses from the survey, because it's been true. Every time I travel, people want to hear me talk all the time. And these responses um, led me to explore what were some of the positive reinforcements associated with the brand. But more importantly, we had to give those responses because if we as Caribbean people can't sell the brand, we're really dead in the water. And so I had to understand how Caribbean people perceive brand Caribbean in order to start weaving an idea together that can create something called a love mark, which is what I'll get to later on. Uh, the results of the survey showed that we can't see it. Interesting. But the words that came up uh, as being popular were beaches, relaxation, sun, 
beautiful, diverse, friendly, vacation, and warm. And while these are very good images to have, it left me feeling as though the Caribbean was one-dimensional. So I didn't want to believe that we were one-dimensional, so I asked another question about our icons. Because the icons are what you sell to the world as your major export, and they're indicative of who you are as a culture. And the top exports that we had were Bob Marley for music, V.S. Nightfall for writing, Brian Lara and UC both for sports, Eric Williams for, for politics, and Derek Walcott for writing as well. And this was very encouraging. It proved that we were not one-dimensional. And it's interesting that these are not current names that you'd see or hear anywhere in person, really, except for Brian Lara and Hussein. However, they were the most prominent in people's minds. The people who were next in line were Rihanna, Anya, Yamchi, and Nicki Minaj, which are new guys. And that gave me a lot of hope. It meant that we really do have the opportunity to create something special with brand, because we, we have diversity. Another interesting part of the survey was the negative association that came up because without prompting someone for a negative response, you get their best or most natural answer. And out of the 300 words I got from the survey that represented how the Caribbean was, only 30% of it was negative, and that's very encouraging. Uh, we got from boring and disorderly to drugs, crime, and unlivable. However, these are global problems that every region faces. We didn't have anything that was different or new or spectacular. We just like every other region, we're better off than some. And this had me feeling even more positive. I felt like we could really do something with Brand Caribbean. And to understand where I wanted to go with it, I didn't want to just come up with a brand. I wanted to come up with something that's called a love mark. And while I was working at Sachi, and Sachi was where I actually learned about branding and marketing, the CEO there called Kevin Roberts launched a concept about love marks. And love marks is about creating brands that you love. Like that Coca-Cola, why you drink it instead of Pepsi? Nobody really knows, it tastes the same. It's just a little different one. And if you tell me it tastes differently, that's because you love the brand and you want to sell it, and that's conditioning of your mind. That, my friend, is a love mark. Uh, the definition of the love marks is the future beyond brands because brands are boring and they can be fads. And so you want to create emotive experiences with a brand. When you think about a brand, it's supposed to spark some sort of emotion in order for it, for it to have life and for it to have energy and for you to fall in love with it because you can't fall in love with a dead thing. And so I was wondering, what are the things that the Caribbean has? What do we have that we can love and that we can talk about? And one of those things was geology. And yes, it's okay to be the land of sun and beaches and fun, but the Caribbean is so multidimensional in what we have. We have things like reefs, coral reefs everywhere across the Caribbean. This is normal for us, it's abnormal everywhere else in the world, except for maybe Australia. We have the caves, the Harrison Caves in Barbados. This is a beautiful piece of geology that it's hidden away because nobody really talks about it. Did you all, anybody <coughs> know about these caves if you're not sure about it? Yes. About four people have raised their hand. We have the Dunge River in Jamaica. This is the only river in the world that has a waterfall at its mouth that leads to the sea. We have this in the Caribbean. We also have things like the Hanuman Murti. Have you all ever seen that before? Yes. Right. Uh, the Hanuman Murti is is the largest uh, in, is Indian idol in this part of the hemisphere. And we have that to explore. And it leads me to believe that we have a best kept secret policy. If it's good, you talk about it in the Caribbean. You ever felt like that? The other thing that we have in space and we have as a gem is cultural diversity and creativity. One of the best feelings in the world is acceptance. If you feel accepted, you're comfortable, you let your hair down, you enjoy yourself. And Caribbean people accept you for who you are because chances are we have a tante or a nana or a granny or somebody who's like you. It's one of the only places in the world that I've been to where I've seen uh, culture, for example, everybody eats halal meat, regardless of if you're Christian, regardless of if you're Hindu, regardless of if you don't believe in anything. We all eat halal meat because a part of our community needs halal meat and we accept that. And that is something that we can sell and it's still an export. Imagine you can come from Poland and feel accepted here and enjoy everything that we have to offer without feeling kind of put off. 
We have some legacy of us carnival that shapes the psyche of all Caribbean people. I had an artist named M. Bites, I did his exhibition, and he said that carnival changes Caribbean people. We have carnival all over the Caribbean. And it changes us because at our formative years when we we're youngest, we we're exposed to music, we we're exposed to motion, and we we're exposed to color in a certain way that nobody else gets to experience. And whether you become a doctor or a lawyer or you're a fishmonger or a garbage man, you experience carnival and it changes your mind and it sparks your creativity and it sparks your ability to be different. And we have to celebrate that. And carnival is now being exported to different parts of North America and Europe. And we don't even know why. We haven't done anything to have it exported. It's just being picked up. Now imagine if we put some focus on exporting things that are cultural like that across the region that we know. And we never really truly appreciate being Caribbean until we leave or until we hit the diaspora. Ask anybody living anywhere else in the Caribbean, they miss it. Um, actually, there's a blog that I follow from a young lady named Carla Moore, who's a Jamaican living in Canada. She's extremely funny. You should check her out. I've played this country for a long time. And she keeps her Caribbean-ness. And I got Carla to do a video about being creative. <coughs> I'd like to listen to about being from the Caribbean. Think of the large Jamaican flag in the door. When I think about being a child of the Caribbean, I think about coming from a place that's full of potential. I think about coming from a place that people are automatically drawn to. And I think about coming from a place that people somehow already love. I think about the number of people that I can relate to and the number of people who can relate to me. I have African influences working on me. I have European influences working on me. I have Indian influences through my grandmother. And I have the influences of the indigenous Caribbean people who we often don't talk about. I mean, we're right in America's backyard. But we're not America. We are something different. We are something that only comes around when all of these things melt and they come together and you get this thing that's the Caribbean and you can't replicate it. When I think about the number of amazing Caribbean scholars and, and artists and athletes, I mean, we're run fast. We're so close, but I was smart. <laughs> and people like this about us. When, I, when, I'm, when I'm on the streets of Toronto and I see two people talking to each other and they're talking like this, you know, I'm very involved. I take one look and I say, those are my Caribbean people. Mm -hmm. But when a Canadian sees those people, they automatically want to know about those people. Why are they so engaged? And why are they so engaging we have that and i think all we need to do is talk to each other we spend a lot of time talking to the world about ourselves individually i think now what we need to do is begin to bridge the divide that this big c has put between us and begin to talk to each other about ourselves and figure out how we're going to harness this to make this one caribbean voice with all of these other voices in it. What is this one Caribbean voice? And what do we want to say to the world about ourselves? And we won't even have to shout. Because the world is listening. The world has been listening to the Caribbean for quite some time now. They want to know about us. I'm a proud Caribbean citizen. I always have been. And I look forward to what the future holds for the Caribbean because I know it's going to be great. There is no way it cannot be great because we're the Caribbean. We talk like we're singing. We eat strange things. And we are amazing. And I'm very, very excited. And I'm actually more excited that I get to be a part of it. So, one Caribbean. Many voices coming up to one voice. One Caribbean voice. Thank you. And so, based on that, do you all feel a bit of emotion here in Carla talk? Do you feel a little bit excited about being from the Caribbean? What we need to do is, to, in order to become a love mom, I have another a love mark that represents the Caribbean. <laughs> is, please play video two if you have it upstairs, uh, is the merging of all of these brands. And what you distill the Caribbean to be is we tell stories. Every one of us, no matter what island you're from, we have several different stories that we all tell every day. And how we make that into a love more is by taking concepts such as being attractive and beaches and all of these words that are flashing in the background and identifying your own story and attaching it to the greater Caribbean story. Because that's the only way that we can really make ourselves unique. 
Um, yeah, we're going to be saying that we're bigger in Texas. Everything is bigger in Texas, or whatever state is in Vegas is in Vegas. I've never been, so I don't know what happens in Vegas. But in the Caribbean, we're storytellers, and that's fantastic. And this is what brings me to what I think the love mark of the Caribbean is and what we should try to sell. Whether you're from the Caribbean or whether you're from abroad, it's where your own story awaits. Nothing is boring in the Caribbean. And that is what we should probably start selling and distilling as the Caribbean brand. My name is Ian Royer. I'm a storyteller. And all of you are storytellers. And I encourage you to help create the Caribbean story. Thank you very much.